Well, welcome back uh, to uh, our devotional and prayer today. Sorry it's getting off a little bit late today. Got a lot cooking over here at First Presbyterian today. Uh, we are giving out 50 food, 50 plus food boxes for Christmas. So uh, we've, uh, we're running around today a little bit more than usual. But I uh, wanted to uh, definitely have some time with you this morning before all that happens. And it is day 18 of Advent for us. And as we are uh, in this week of looking at the second coming of Jesus, uh, we are focused on some of the uh, scriptures that describe that for us and help us to understand what will take place. <clears throat> so um, I wanted to um, share with you a portion of the book of Acts in the first chapter. And uh, if you recall, this is the second half of what Luke wrote <clears throat> to Theophilus. And when you go down to verse 6 of the first chapter, uh, you will see there it starts with these words. So when they had come together, and this is the disciples with Jesus, this is after Jesus has already risen from the dead, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. So notice right there, he repeats it. You're not going to know when. The time, the timing, don't even be concerned about because you're not going to know it, okay? But, he says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So you could see here what takes uh, precedent here. It's not about knowing when it's going to take place. God knows us all too well here because... We'll get focused on that and forget what the main mission is for the church, which is what? To receive the Holy Spirit, be empowered by God to go and be witnesses, to go and make disciples uh, for God. So you see that shift here. Um, he's trying to help them get focused, and the Holy Spirit would definitely help them to get focused, as it does anybody who has the Holy Spirit. And then, he, and then it says this. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. So you have this right in front of their eyes, as it's described here, Jesus is lifted up, and then he disappears behind the clouds. So imagine, you know how we go down to uh, Florida, whether it's by TV or in person, to see a rocket launch, uh, or um, uh, Houston, I think, maybe, but I, I think it's uh, more Cape Canaveral, where the rockets go up and you're watching and watching and watching, and with the human eye, you could only see it for so long. Even with the television, you could only see it for so long with those zoom cameras. But after that, it disappears. Can't see it anymore. So, uh, in essence, something like that happened here with Jesus. And it says, while he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. The two men in white robes, of course, are angels sent from God to speak to them at this moment, very significant moment. Jesus um, comes to earth with the announcement of the angels and he leaves earth with an announcement from angels. And uh, these angels are reminiscent of when the resurrection took place because who did they find at the empty tomb but the two men in white, the two angels. And they said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? They're probably you know, probably looking like that, like, what the heck is going on? What did we just see? The mouth's wide open. It says, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. So you get a vision here. The same way Jesus went up at the ascension is the same way that he will come down to earth at the second coming. So, um... If anybody ever says, well, you're wasting your time looking up into the clouds, uh, not necessarily. Um, if you've ever, as a Christian, looked up on a beautiful sunny day with uh, some of those white puffy clouds against the backdrop of a blue sky, have you ever given thought to the fact of, well, wonder if it would be a day like today where Jesus would appear from behind the clouds and uh, we would know that um, he was coming and that he had arrived. So, um just a little insight, but a live episode with the disciples where straight from the angels that God sends, we have direction that that is the same way that Jesus will return upon the clouds coming back. So if you see those beautiful works of art, uh, sometimes in the churches where they show Jesus on the clouds, 
uh, whether he's ascending or descending uh, it may not be clear, but that's the way he comes and goes. So, and that is the way he will return, not as a baby in a manger, but as the glorified risen Christ coming down from behind the clouds. So, um, another insight into the second coming of Christ, but notice in the midst of that story is still the focus for the church. It's not a time to just sit and do nothing and wait. It is a time to be witnesses. It is a time to ask the Holy Spirit to empower us to go and make disciples. So let's pray on that. Lord Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise that you are the one who is lifted up, truly lifted up. And though you have already gone back to heaven, we thank you that you have the power in your hands to be the risen and lifted one. And that one day at the Father's call, a time we all do not know when, but it will come when you will return to us here on earth to take us to be with you forever. So, Lord, we look forward to that day. We pray for that day. Help us to be expectant of that day and help us to keep our faith in you and your word about it. And help us to be vigilant that we all may be waiting and ready for your return. And help us to be good witnesses as we go about our work here on earth until you return again. In your precious name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.